Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Morris Federation series of talks and workshops during lockdown. And today we have Jill and Barry Goodman, who are going to take us on a tour of calendar events, and I'm going to hand straight over to them. Thank you very much, Paulie. I'm just going to get the screen share up. There we are. And away we go. Right. Well, lovely to see so many familiar faces. Uh, that we haven't seen for far too long. Far too long, yeah. Right, so good morning, lords and ladies. We're going to start, start by saying a little bit about ourselves. Barry and I have been involved in the folk scene since 1971, when we were at Teacher Training College. We were part of the teenage scene that embraced folk rock and American protest songs. We listen to the spinners, singer-songwriters like Ralph McTell, Bob Dylan, and Simon and Garfunkel. I expect many of you did as well. We ran the College Folk Club, and through a physics lecturer, who was also a Morris dancer from Chichester, he danced with the Martlets, learnt about the wider aspect of the folk scene, folk dancing and customs. We joined the English Folk Dance and Song Society and Barry became a folk singer. There he is. That was the guy that I met all those years ago. Barry then sang in the local pubs and clubs around the Bogner area, which is where we were at Teacher Training College. We immersed ourselves in the scene, went to folk festivals and learnt about traditional songs and widen our knowledge of artists, songs and dancing. We became Morris dancers Hooray. and gradually became absorbed in the general folk customs and traditions. Now Dennis will recognise this kit, Dennis Taylor, who was very, in, he was very much part of the tradition of Bedfordshire Lace at the beginning. Um, he composed the dancers, in fact, really got us off to go, off, off dancing and with the tradition of the dances of Catherine's Cross that we danced all through. So thank you, Dennis, for that. We are going to take you through the year and explore a few of the many folk traditions and customs that are still practiced in England today, starting <coughs> and finishing on the 1st of May. Good morning, lords and ladies. It is the 1st of May. We hope you'll view our garland. It is so fine and gay. For it is the 1st of May. Oh, it is the 1st of May. Remember, lords and ladies, it is the 1st of May. We gathered them this morning, all in the early dew, and now we brought their beauty and fragrance all to you, for it is the first of May, oh, it is the first of May. Remember, lords and ladies, it is the first of May. Well, now the cuckoo comes in April, she sings a song in May. In June she changes tune, in July she flies away. For it is the first of May, oh, it is the first of May. Remember, lords and ladies, it is the first of May. Well, now you've seen our garland, we can no longer stay. But remember, lords and ladies, it is the first of May, for it is the first of May. Oh, it is the first of May. Remember, lords and ladies, it is the first of May. First of May, they are. <clears throat> that song, song is sung at the Ickwell May Day celebrations in Bedfordshire. Documents have shown that May Day was an established custom at Ickwell as far back as 1561. May customs abounded throughout England, as you well know. <laughs> Each had its own identity, but all shared common aspects. The origin is from Celtic times, when it was a day of significance and joy. 
The Celts calendar was divided equally into summer and winter and May Day was the first day of summer. Medieval and Tudor aristocracy went to Maying, while peasants and country folk just cavorted around maypoles, which had no ribbons, but was just a tree cut down, stripped of its branches except its crown, and decorated with May hawthorn blossom. The pole was taken in procession to the village and set up on the green, an opportunity for partying, dancing, and courting. No. May Day festivities were continually opposed by the church from at least the 15th century as they were considered to be unruly and pagan. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's May Day in Hitching, ladies and gentlemen, which is where we live. And uh, clearly it's still very unruly and pagan here because it's snowing again yeah. out there in Hitching. Unruly and pagan and snowing in Hitching. There you go. <laughs> Certainly don't want this May Day morning, do you? <laughs> you don't, do you? <laughs> Henry VIII. Henry VIII was sympathetic, a king who saw no reason to stop the fun and festivities. May Day was consequently included in the church's calendar and the procession included Our Lady and the Infant Christ. Puritans banned it, but they banned everything that was fun. It was soon re-established after the restoration of King Charles II. The modern concept of the maypole, though, is with ribbons and children weaving patterns about it. But this only goes back to 1880s, when John Ruskin, the social thinker, art critic and philanthropist, introduced the idea from Southern Europe. I certainly remember dancing around the maypole as a, a young girl. Um, and of course, we... Barry has always done it in his schools and the schools we've been involved in. Ruskin was involved with Whitelands College, a training college for women teachers, where he inaugurated the May Day ceremonies. It was his wish that the most likeable and lovable of their number should be the May Queen. Many of these teachers took the Maypole dancing and May Queen idea to their schools around the country and added it to the May celebrations. And one of these was a Mrs Hodges, who became headmistress at Ickwell School. <clears throat> there are so many customs connected to the month of May, but we will only talk about the two we have been most involved with over the many years we have been Morris dancing. Both of them are from the south of England and include the mysterious character of Jack in the Green. This is a song uh, written by Martin Grabe, um, who some of you will know, songwriter from down Gloucestershire way. And the uh, song is called Jack in the Green. And uh, I've noticed some people singing already. And of course, if you are singing along to the choruses, it's, it's the greatest opportunity you have because uh, nobody else can hear them. It's just you and you know just how good you are. So um, this is Jack in the Green. Please join in with the chorus when we get to it. <laughs> Now winter is over, I'm happy to say, and we're all met again with our ribbons so gay, and we're all met again to rejoice in the spring, and to go about dancing with Jack in the Green, Jack in the Green, Jack in the Green, and we're all dancing to springtime with Jack in the Green. Now Jack in the Green is a very strange man Though he dies every autumn, he's born every spring And each year on his birthday we'll dance in the street And in return Jackie will ripen the wheat Jack in the Green, Jack in the Green And we'll all dance in springtime with Jack in the Green now 
all you young maidens, I have you beware of touching young Jack, for there's strange powers there. For if you but touch him, there's many will tell. Like the wheat in the fields, so your belly will swell. Jack in the green, Jack in the green. And we'll all dance in springtime with Jack in the green. With his mantle he'll cover the trees that are bare And our gardens he'll trim with his jacket so fair But the fields he will sow with the hair of his head And the grain it will ripen till old Jack is dead Jack in the green, Jack in the green And we'll all dance each springtime with Jack in the green now the sun is half up and it signals the hour that the children arrive with their garlands of flowers. So now let the music and dancing begin and touch the good hearts of young Jack in the green, Jack in the green, Jack in the green. And we'll all dance each springtime with Jack in the green, Jack in the green, Jack in the green. And we'll all dance in springtime with Jack in the Green. Jack in the Green. The character of Jack in the Green is a conical structure that is danced around the streets during the May season. It's about seven foot tall and covered in greenery and usually crowned with flowers. Inside the structure is a person hidden to give the impression that the bush has developed a life of its own. This Jack character seems to have come from the 19th century, particularly in southern England, and evolved from the elaborate garlands carried in May processions. Sweeps Festival is a modern revival of an old tradition. The late 17th century saw the establishment of guilds. Each had its customs and holidays. The beginning of spring coincided with the end of the chimney sweeping season. So the chimney sweeps held its annual holiday around the 1st of May. As time went by, guilds competed in the elaborateness of their costumes or their garlands and hoped to use them to collect money. There's a slip there, it should have said garlands. The chimney sweeps created elaborate garlands that a man could get inside and parade through the streets. These parades were well documented, but started to decline in 1875, when the Climbing Boys Act was passed, making it illegal for young boys to climb chimneys. The boys no longer took, they took part in the parades and their pop popularity waned. The festival was revived in 1981 by a local Mr. historian in Morris Dancer who organized a small parade of Jack in the Green accompanied by chimney sweeps. This grew into what has become one of the biggest gatherings of English Morris sides with more than a thousand dancers taking part over three days. It has become a big tourist attraction sponsored by Medway Council and has street theatre, artisan food and music stages around the town and in the castle grounds. So many of you that have danced at this event, you can have fond memories. Yep, you can pictures. And the other yep. favourite, of course, is Hastings trad traditional Jack in the Green, which was revived around the same time. It has changed and grown over the years that we have been dancing at the event. Being by the sea and in a very different town, it has its similarities and differences with the Rochester event. The atmosphere is also enhanced on the Monday when the big procession up to the castle on the cliffs encounters thousands of motorcyclists who ride into town for the biggest free motorcycle festival in the UK. The Jack and the Green festivities are centred mainly in the old town around the net shops and fishermen's huts and narrow streets 
that the town coped surprisingly well with this great influx of folkies and bikers. Like Rochester, they had a traditional May Queen ceremony and gathering to welcome the summer at dawn on the 1st of May and a fantastic procession on the Bank Holiday Monday has evolved its own tradition and includes sweeps, giants, bogies, Morris dancers, drumming bands and fantastic elaborate costumes. I think it rivals the Mardi Gras of the Caribbean. The Jack is released from the Fisherman's Museum, an old church, and the bogies stab the Morris dancers and anyone they see with green paint. The atmosphere is electric. This custom, which was once as dead as a dodo, has had a remarkable resurrection, with Jack in, Jacks in the Greens springing up all around the country, even in places where they were never seen before. Always great fun, both events to dance at. We're now moving on to the end of May we arrive at the beginning of the well-dressing season. Barry and I first came across well-dressing more than 40 years ago while holidaying in the Peak District near Worksworth. That's actually a picture of me with my daughter on my back. This was probably the only occasion when she actually sat in that blooming thing and didn't wriggle. <laughs> she went to sleep and you can see the date at the top there is 1980 so it's 40 41 years ago works worth <laughs> <laughs> this town has made a big celebration of the custom of blessing the well holding a festival over the spring bank holiday with maypole dancing and concert stages around the, and a carnival on the monday the custom of well dressing in derbyshire may date back to Celtic times and probably had its roots in the celebration of thanks for water. As much of the rock in the Peak District is porous limestone, so water could often be in short supply. Like many folk traditions, it was later adopted by the Christian Church as a way of giving thanks to God for his gift of water. The earliest recorded well dressings in Derbyshire was at Tissington in 1349. We haven't got a photograph of the 1349 one, but we've got a few old photographs. <laughs> and they have been a ceremony <clears throat> for thanks for surviving the Black Death, which was sweeping Europe at the time. Another tradition could recalls the severe drought of 1615. There was no rain fell upon the earth from the 25th of March until the end of May, and then there was but one shower. Two more showers fell between then and the 4th of August, so that the greater part of the land was burnt up, both corn and hay. Despite the severity of the, this drought, when thousands of cattle perished, and crops were lost. The five wells of Tissington flowed freely and the local district benefited from the unending supply of water from this little village. A Thanksgiving service was held and the wells were decorated each year in memory of this deliverance. In some villages, the dressings appear at the village taps, pumps or fountains to celebrate the arrival of piped water. And these are known as tap dressings. The wells are blessed by the local clergy, sometimes shaking a sprig of rosemary dipped in holy water over the well. And prayers and hymns follows. In the early days, the dressing of wells would take the form of simple arrangements of flowers and other natural materials. And over the years, this has developed into the unique Derbyshire tradition of elaborate pictures made mostly from individual flower petals pressed onto clay covered boards. First, the clay is puddled, usually by working it with the feet, then spread onto a wet board. Finally, petals and other natural materials are pressed into the clay and the well dressing can be displayed. Well dressings happen from early May to mid September and only last about a week before they have dried out and faded. The making of the well dressing is very much a community activity with schools, clubs and societies 
all act actively involved in the design, building and maintenance of the displays, which have become a big tourist attraction as well as a local custom. The pictures often depict Bible stories, but can also reflect local and national <coughs> events, such as the Dam Busters, Votes for Women, Beatrix Potter, Raoul Dahl, and Mr. Happy. Mr. Happy. Well dressing is a tradition that has grown over the years, providing an opportunity for communities to show off their artistic talents in this unique and colourful way. Barry will now sing the Well Dressing song by Sarah Matthews. Lovely, thank you. Yes, um, Sarah, um, who some of you will know, I'm sure, is a dancer with Pexerton Morris, um, musician, singer, um, dance band, player and so on. She wrote a lovely song about uh, well dressing a few years ago. Um, so this is it. And uh, it's got a nice chorus in it. So please join in in the comfort of your own home. <laughs> Thanks and give praise now that the water it does flow. It brings us good health and strength, helps us all to grow. So dress the well with colours gay, beat the drum and sing hooray. Praise be, we can see the water flow today. Praise be, we can see the water flow today. Petals and moss, we will press into the clay. A living, glowing tapestry, our stories to portray. So dress the well with colours gay, beat the drum and sing hooray. Praise be, we can see the water flow today. Praise be, we can see the water flow today. Palettes of clay, seasons, colours to rest the well. We crafted our scenes, a village life, our tales to tell. So dress the well with colours gay, beat the drum and sing hooray. Praise be, we can see the water flow today. Praise be, we can see the water flow today. It was long, long ago, oh how it started, who can say? But every year you'll find us here, it's our well-dressing day. So dress the well with colours gay, beat the drum and sing hooray. Praise be, we can see the water flow today. Praise be, we can see the water flow today. So dress the well with colours gay, beat the drum and sing hooray. Praise be, we can see the water flow today. Praise be, we can see the water flow today. Well, dressing. We now move through the summer to the end of August to the custom of rush bearing. <clears throat> The custom of strewing cut vegetation on the floors of churches began in pre-Reformation days. The plants commonly used were hay, straw or rushes, and together with some strewn herbs, they improved the comfort of those using the church. Renewal of the floor covering was usually carried out before major festivals, such as Easter, and in this case, Rogation Tide. In the 19th century, the villages around Manchester 
the rush bearing grew into a festival held on the annual wakes week or mill holidays. Villagers would try to outdo each other by building bigger and more elaborate rush carts to carry the rushes. Decorated with tinsels and artificial flowers and hung with polished copper, brass and silver household items. The rush carts eventually died out in the early 20th century as the railways allowed the local population to travel further afield for their annual break. The Saddleworth rush cart is yet another revival, this time by Saddleworth Morris men. A member of the Morris team is elected each year as the jockey. His job is to name the cart, sit on the top of the rushes with a large pot of ale. As the cart is taken through the villages of Saddleworth Mall throughout <coughs> the day on the Saturday of the festival. The cart is pulled by 80 Morris dancers with a further 40 behind to act as the break on the downhill sections of the journey. All holding on to the wooden stangs fixed to ropes. The rushes are then taken in procession to St Chad's Church in Upper Mill on the Sunday. Uh, Barry has written a song which explains all that happens. Uh, indeed, yes, um, it's another of those, uh, yeah, a song about basically about what you've just heard about. Um, I know lots of you will have been to Saddleworth, lots of you will have done the rush cart, seen it, been involved in it. Um, so uh, I'm sure, I hope, I hope that uh, what I'm singing about is as accurate as, as, as it can be. Uh, there is one village, I'm, I do mention some villages in, in the, in the, in uh, Saddleworth where, that the procession goes through and there's one that it doesn't. Um, but I, I've included it partly because I just love the name and partly because it wouldn't have fitted otherwise. I couldn't have made up a song. So there's an extra village in there. Spot the extra village. OK, this is um, Dancing Away Up the Street. <laughs> Dance, dance, dance to the sound of melodium drum and the fiddle so sweet. Dance, dance, all on the rush cart and dance it away up the street. Over in Saddleworth Vale, the rushes are cut at the foot of Pool Hill, taken each year without fail to build a new rush cart at Upper Mill. The jockey has chosen the cart, it is named the rushes part high like a steeple. And Saturday morning each year it's the same, the rush cart is shown to the people. Dance, dance, dance to the sound of melody and drum and the fiddles are sweet. Dance, dance, all on the rush cart and dance it away up the street. Up on the rush cart so high, the jockey is sitting so proud and so grand. Looks like he's touching the sky with a big copper kettle of ale in his hand. It's his day of glory, he's part of the story of saddle with rush cart tradition. So all to the stangs, the Morris men's gangs are hurrying into position. Dance, dance, dance to the sound of melodium drum and the fiddles so sweet. Dance, dance, all on the rush cart and dance it away up the street. Hauling the cart up the hill, with 80 in front and 40 behind, we heave it from fair upper mill. And then as the roadway begins to wind, the Pots and Pans monument stands on the hill, surrounded by beautiful heather. And the village of Greenfield appears in their sights as they pull the cart onwards together. Dance, dance, dance to the sound of melodium drum and the fiddles are sweet. Dance, dance, all on the rush cart and dance it away up the street. The procession continues along from Greenfield to Diggle and Dog Cross and Delft, but they stop for a dance and a song at each village pub where they find themselves. The rushes are strewn in the church the next day to the joy of the whole congregation. And the valley enjoys its wakes holiday, the annual great celebration. Dance, dance, dance to the sound of melody and drum, fiddles are sweet. Dance, dance, all on the rush cart and dance it away up the street. There 
can't dance on the way up the street. All about the rush cars. <laughs> November. We're getting through the year now. November heralds the beginning of winter with dark evenings. Perfect for bonfires and fireworks. <clears throat> but despite all the health and safety regulate rules that our modern world seems obsessed with, tar barrel rolling has to be one of the craziest 5th of November traditions. Every year, flaming tar barrels are carried through the streets of Ostry St Mary and Devon to the delight of thousands of townsfolk and visitors. Starting with the junior barrels in the late afternoon, the size of the barrels grows as adults carry them until the final enormous one, the hogshead, is carried just before midnight. A gigantic bonfire over 10 metres high and crowned by guy forts forms an impressive background to the occasion together, together with a fairground and many attractions. Opinions differs to the origins of this festival of fire, but the most widely accepted version is it began as a pagan ritual that cleans the streets of evil spirits. Who knows? Barry will sing the song Nine Burning Barrels, written by a Dorset songwriter, writer Tim Laycock. The chorus is vivid in the description of the event. And keep on singing. Yes, please do keep on singing. Just before I do the song, um, there's one more thing that happens on um, November the 5th each year. Apart from, from um, hauling flaming tar barrels up and down the streets, um, they also set off things called rock cannons. Three times during the day, the rock cannons are set off. These are devices improvised from steel bars, drilled with a short hole and filled with gunpowder, which is ignited by means of a percussion cap and a hammer. You can see the guy there, he's going to have loads of fun with his, his, um, his, his little improvised gun there. He's going to bang it with a hammer. It's going to go bang. Um, they do take health and safety very seriously, of course, at Ottery St. Mary. The guys who fire the rock cannons do wear high visibility jackets. I'm sure that helps a lot. And there is also a big red sign there which says, warning, flaming tar barrels, just in case you hadn't noticed. The song is called um, Fire Nine Burning Barrels, and it's written by Tim Laycock. Um, and again, I hope you enjoy it. As I went down to Devon, the afternoon was cold and wet. Rain came to catch me in a clammy autumn net. I never saw the sun, the night crept behind. As I came into Ottery, she pulled down the blinds. And there's mothers having trouble, for the kids won't go to bed. The bonfire is built, procession orders read. The barrels in the sheds get a final call to tar. There's men talking softly round the fire in the bar. Down at the half moon they pass the night away, keeping out the cold while the night turns to day. Load up the rock cannons, choose a good percussion cap. As the night begins to fade, give a steady tap. The shots ring through the village, the cock crows in dismay. Beaten once every year at welcoming the day. Fire them again as the clock strikes noon. We'll fire them for the children's barrel in the afternoon. They'll need sacking gloves, old coats, collars up to guard throats. Put on your gloves, hat and coat and cover barrel rolling. Five little barrels on a sharp November day. Keep running, keep all tuck your curls away. Up the down and round them all about, round them through the streets till they're all burnt out. Town streets are crowded for the carnival parade. The silver band leads the show proudly down the hill. The rock cannons ring, the fair begins to swing. The mayor lights the bonfire at the mill. Well now the first is the factory barrel, they'll be away from the London Hotel. From the feathers they run, so fine ladies barrels lit at nine. One from the half moon, one from the lamb, the volunteer and the mason's arms. Up into the new town, down into the old. Nothing like a tar fire to keep us from the cold. Run, run, if you stop you'll burn. 
When you can't stand anymore, the next will take a turn. And there'll be nine burning barrels and a sharp November night. Keep running, keep all, keep them blazing bright. Up or down and run them all about. Run them through the streets till they're all burnt out. Finally there's the hogshead, the largest of them all. It takes two to carry it, blazing through the crowd. Run it till its hoops fall red hot to the ground. Throw in your gloves, hat and coat, and all gather round. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of nine burning barrels in a sharp November night. Keep running, keep on, oh, keep them blazing bright. Up or down and run them all about. Run them through the streets till they're all burnt out. Later there'll be photos, a write up in the news. A row of burns and bruises in the doctor's surgery. A lingering smell of tar to purify the air as winter walks the lanes to Ottery. And it isn't just for Guy Fawkes, nor the carnival show. Why they roll the barrels, no one really knows. I thought I saw the hunter keep the beast at bay, and carry the sun till spring should come, and melt the snows away. Nine burning barrels in a sharp November night, Keep running, keep all, keep them blazing bright. Up or down and run them all about. Run them through the streets till they're all burnt out. There were nine burning barrels and a sharp November night. Keep running, keep all, keep them blazing bright. Up or down and run them all about. Run them through the streets till they're all burnt out. Nine burning barrels, Tim Laycock, wonderful songwriter. We are now coming to the end of the year, culminating in Christmas and all its traditions and festivities. For Barry, it's now the mumming season, when the bra front geysers from Upper Bra Front in the Hedges, you got it? Yeah. Form around the area in pubs and at Christmas events, culminating in a Boxing Day performance in the village of Silso always attended by a large audience, glad to escape the house into the fresh air after Christmas day. There are three main recognized types of mama's play, hero combat, wooing and sword dance. Each has its regional variations in costume, script and names of characters. Recalling the early days of mumming in the 17th and 18th centuries, when plays were only performed in a small area sometimes limited to just a few streets and always by the same group of players each year. The Bra Front Geysers perform a hero combat play in which St George and the Turkish Knight engage in a fight. St George is slain and a quack doctor brings him back to life again. The play is based on traditional scripts, but it's very much the Geysers' own play and has been added to and modified over the 40 years or so of its performance. A collection is made at the end of the play, which is given to charity, although mummers in the past would have collected money for themselves. Uh, Barry has written on a calling on the song to introduce the characters and sketch out the plot of the play as an introduction to the performance. And I'm sorry, there's Phil there who now <laughs> plays St George. Oh, St George, he does, that's right. Can yeah. I play St George, dear? We've also, got, we've also got Dennis right in front of us here, who was Beelzebub for some years, I seem to remember. And I suspect there may even be one or two other ex uh, bra front geysers in the audience today. So if you know the chorus, sing along. This is uh, all in the winter time. And it's all in the winter time. We fell as meaty cheer for the play and the song and a tankard of good beer. It's all in the winter time. We fell as meat again. Now we'll tell you about our merry guising men. Here's Father Christmas with his broom and bell in hand, and he's clear in the way for our actors to stand. 
In steps St George, now he's dressed up all in green, as brave and as fearless a knight was never seen. Oh, but here comes the Turkish knight, his scimitar held high. He's determined that on this day St George will surely die. They fight and a valley, and but in the final round, St George is betrayed and soon lies bleeding on the ground. And it's all in the winter time we fellas meet each year for the play and a song and a tankard of good beer. It's all in the winter time we fellas meet again. Now we'll tell you about our merry guising men. Clever legs reminds us that his wit is very small, but his mischief is great, though he isn't very tall. And here's an old mother who's afraid her son is slain. She's needing a doctor to bring him back again. Oh, and here is the doctor with his coat and bag and hat. He's got potions and secrets we can only wonder at. And call in Jack Finney, he's as strong as any man. If anyone can save St George, we know Jack Finney can. And it's all in the winter time we fellas meet each year for the play and the song and the tankard of good beer. It's all in the winter time we fellas meet again. Now we'll tell you about our merry guising men. Finally, Beelzebub brings on his dripping pan to collect from the audience as much as he can. We're the jolly geysers and we visit you today to wish you season's greetings and to offer you our play. The Calling On Song. We now move on to one of the bleakest times of the year, especially in the Fens, to the town of Whittlesea. Whittlesea. In January, the first Monday after the Twelfth Night is known as Plough Monday, the day when the plough boys return to work after the Christmas holiday. There are a number of Plough Monday customs, one of which involves the remarkable Whittlesea Straw Bear. In Whittlesea, from when no one quite knows, it was the custom on the Tuesday following Plough Monday to dress a ploughman in straw and call him a straw bear. A newspaper of 1882 reports that he was then taken around the town to entertain by his frantic and clumsy gestures the good folk who had, on the previous day, subscribed to the rustics a spread of beer, tobacco and beef. The bear was described as having great lengths of tightly twisted straw bands wound up the arms, legs and body of a man or boy who was unfortunate enough to have been chosen. Straw was wound around the cone of sticks above the bear's head so that his face was quite covered and could hardly see. A tail was attached and a strong chain fastened under the armpits. He was led around the town to dance in front of houses where gifts of money, beer or food were expected. It seems that he was considered important as straw was carefully selected each year from the best available. The harvesters saying, That'll do for the bear. The tradition fell into decline at the end of the 19th century. The last sighting was in 1909 when it appears an overzealous police inspector had forbidden straw bears as a form of cadging. But the custom was revived, like most of these customs, around in 1980 by the Whittlesea Society. And for the first time in 70 years, a straw bear was seen on the streets with his attendant keeper, musicians and dancers, about 30 in all. Various public houses were visited around the town as convenient places for the bear and dancers to perform in front of an audience with much needed refreshment available. The procession now contains over 250 dancers, musicians and performers from various parts of the British Isles, performing traditional Molly, Morris, clog and sword dances. There's also American style Appalachian dancing, street performances and mummers plays. And a decorated plough is pulled by 20th century ploughboys as now an established part of the procession. In 1999, the straw bear made friends with a German straw bear from Waldhorn near Frankfurt, 
a town that celebrates its own straw bear festival on the Monday before Shrove Tuesday. Barry's written a song for this surprise. time. Okay, so you're getting the picture now. If there's, a, if there's a custom that doesn't actually have a song attached to it, I write one. This is the one I wrote for Whittlesea Straw Bear. Uh, there's been a number, actually. We, I was involved in the Whittlesea Straw Bear online. Some of you might have seen it uh, earlier this year. And um, there were several songs I noticed there which were about the straw bear, some of which use the tune, which is uh, the dance tune that the bear dances to all day. This one does as well for the chorus. And for those of you who've been to the straw bear, you'll know that the tune that the bear dances to all day on Saturday is a lovely tune. It's a delightful tune. Many of us know it already. And it's really, really lovely to listen to the first five or six times. After you've been following the bear around all day on Saturday, it does become just a little bit of an earworm. Um, so anyway, that is the, the, the tune for the chorus. It's uh, the chorus. The song is called Follow the Straw Bear. And uh, hopefully it will tell you the story. As Jules just done. <laughs> Follow the straw bear dancing down the street. Listen to the drum that's pounding out the beat. See how he dances and prances about. Follow the straw bear as he goes dancing all to Whittlesea. Christmas now is ended and the celebrations past. It's time to get back to the fields and work the plough at last. But winter's still upon us and frost is in the air. It's time that we were following the old straw bear. Follow the straw bear dancing down the street. Listen to the drum that's pounding out the beat. See how he dances and prances about. Follow the straw bear as he goes dancing all through Whittlesea. In years gone by, the bear would caper all around the town, in clothing of the finest roll wound tightly all around. A strong and healthy plowman, well chosen for the year, who would dance around old Whittlesea for pennies and for beer. Follow the straw bear, a dancing down the street, listen to the drum oh, that's pounding out the beat. See how he dances and prances about. Follow the straw bear as he goes dancing all through Whittlesea. But then the custom ended and the bear was seen no more. A distant happy memory of how things were before. They said it was just begging. The straw bear was at fault. A penny for the ploughboy and it all end up in court. Follow the straw bear a dancing down the street. Listen to the drum oh, that's pounding out the beat. See how he dances and prances about. Follow the straw bear as he goes down Dancing all through Whittlesea. But seven decades later, the straw bear did arise. Dance around old Whittlesea to everyone's surprise. There's Molly dancers, Morris men, a bright beer ribbon plow, and a little bear from Germany joins in the dancing now. Follow the straw bear, a dancing down the street. Listen to the drum that's pounding out the See how he dances and prances about. Follow the straw bear as he goes dancing all through Whittlesea. The Saturday festivities are drawing to an end. Winter's icy fingers creep across the savage fens. But Sunday looms and very soon the time approaches when the bear is burned. But next year he will rise and dance again. Follow the straw bear, dancing down the street. Listen to the drum, oh, that's pounding out the beat. See how he dances and prances about. Follow the straw bear as he goes dancing all through Whittlesea. <laughs> We now come to February the 14th, oh. the next opportunity for marketing after Christmas. 
The Christmas cards are gone and soon Valentine's Day cards and gifts are in the shops. Another excuse to make us part with our money. We are going to tell you about a character you may not have heard of. Jack Valentine, who rather like Father Christmas, <coughs> gives presents. This is one of the many accounts where people explain this Norfolk tradition. The Norfolk I grew up in was a, a practical place, but it had one special romantic tradition that seems unique to the county, that of Jack Valentine. It's said that in Victorian times, Vic Valentine's Eve was as important as Christmas in Norfolk, with lavish presents exchanged anonymously between lovers and children being given presents by their parents. Now, as far as presents for children was concerned, this was still very common in the 1960s. As incomers to the area, my parents were unaware of the custom, and so I would jealously listen to my schoolmates speaking about what Jack Valentine had brought them. It may only have been some chocolate or a book, but it was the principle of the thing. They had another Father Christmas figure, and I was missing out. Depending on family tradition and where in the county you live, Jack Valentine can become Old Father Valentine or Old Mother Valentine, knocking on the door and leaving a present on the step to be collected by the expectant child. In a cruel variation on the theme, another somewhat darker character appears, Snatch Valentine. Snatch <laughs> acts like a character from a Roald Dahl story. There's a knock on the door, the child opens the door and a package sits on the step. The child reaches for it and wham, the string attached to it is yanked and the present disappears. This rigmarole continues several times and the child becomes more and more agitated until finally the string is not pulled and the present sits safely in the youngster's hands. Some families continue with the tradition so why this custom grew in Norfolk, nobody can explain. An article in a Norwich newspaper in 2014 explains that the city's marketing manager has taken the Jack Valentine custom and used it to the advantage of the local shopkeepers. Norwich Bid is proud to be supporting Valentine's Eve in Norwich Lanes. Norwich is modern and vibrant, but it's great to see the revival of Valentine's Eve celebrations adding to the life of the city with exciting events. Creatively decorated shop windows and a specially brewed Jack Valentine Ale. Norwich Lanes will be brimming with love and romance, and so we look forward to Jack kicking off a whole host of exciting events. Song now called Jack Valentine. Now, um, it's possible that um, in this uh, this meeting today we may have someone who actually used to play used to be jack valentine a very old friend of ours who lives in norfolk uh, we discovered just the other day we met lots of people who've been involved in the jack valentine custom as children um getting presents but we never met anybody before who actually did the jack valentine thing and provided the presents but an old friend of ours from uh, from norfolk actually he might well be watching today i don't know anyway the song is called jack valentine oh and he's got a chorus i forgot that i must i must tell you about this because it's important um i'll just do this one uh yes he's got a chorus the chorus is good morning valentine god bless the baker you'll be the giver and i'll be the taker and this apparently was a little rhyme that children used to say or sing when they were going around on valentine's day collecting money because it's one of these winter customs it's all about money collection in hard times so good morning valentine god bless the baker you'll be the giver and i'll be the taker here we go <laughs> morning valentine god bless the baker you'll be the giver and i'll be the taker in the gloom of early morn in the hours before the dawn you might see a shadowy form going on his way up the lane and down the track heavy bag upon his back and don't you know that this is jack 
out on Valentine's Day. Good morning, Valentine. God bless the baker. You'll be the giver, and I'll be the taker. When the children are asleep, Jack along the lane will creep, and leave a present small and sweet, and then be on his way. As the sun begins to rise, wipe the sleep from out your eyes. On the doorstep, a surprise, a gift for Valentine's Day. Good morning, Valentine. God bless the baker. You'll be the giver, and I'll be the taker. Can you see Jack Valentine? Surely there must be a sign. See how bright the sun does shine. And yet he's gone away. Jack's just like a brother there, never seen but always there, leaving presents everywhere, every Valentine's Day. Good morning, Valentine. God bless the baker. You'll be the giver, and I'll be the taker. Jack Valentine, they are. There are hundreds of these local customs and traditions, and we have only introduced a few. We are going to conclude our presentation by returning to May Day. But this time it's a custom that we have been instrumental in creating. Our respective Morris teams have welcomed the summer at Catherine's Cross in Amptill Park each year at the unearthly hour of 5.25 a.m. This ritual had been in our family for oh, probably nearly 40 years. We set our alarm and dressed in our Morris kit, woke the family and drove to the park to dance and sing. It's a tradition rather like Christmas, Easter or birthdays. It's something important to us and to many others because we can often, if our Morris size did not turn up, many people would be disappointed because we can gather a crowd of 50 to 100 spectators who come to watch the dancing at sunrise. Afterwards, they have the opportunity to go to the pub for a cooked breakfast and a pint of beer at 7.30 in the morning. Most years, it was then off to work. Barry's last song, Amptil Sunrise, describes this annual event. Certainly does. And again, there are, I know there are people watching today who um, have been involved in the Amptil Sunrise. I know Dennis was many, many years ago, right in the early days. And uh, yeah. there are a lot of other people I know and people who come as guests as well. We've invited uh, other sides to come and join us as well. So if you remember Amptil Sunrise, some of this might be familiar to you. Uh, the song is called Amptil Sunrise and it goes like this. <laughs> It's the first of May, and dancers are gathered by Catherine's Cross to welcome the first of May. For it's a dancing day, the people of Hampton are happy to say today is the first of May. The view on the grass, the mist in the air, a chill as they wait for the dawn. The jingle of bells as they climb up the hill to dance in the summer reborn. At Catherine's Cross in the day's early glow, the dancers are waiting once more. At five in the morning they put on a show, as many have done there before. For it's the first of May, the dancers are gathered by Catherine's Cross to welcome the first of May. For it's a dancing day, the people of Amptel are happy to say today is the first of May. 
The audience cheers as the music strikes up the first dance to welcome the sun. And women and men are dancing again, the festival has begun. The sound of melodian fiddle and pipe, the clashing of sticks in the air. A song and a garland to welcome the May, the handsomest month of the year. For it's the first of May. And dancers are gathered by Catherine's Cross to welcome the first of May. For it's a dancing day. The people of Hampton are happy to say today is the first of May. Round in a circle the audience dance, the sun is now up in the sky. Then leaving the hill of the people walk down to another old sun nearby. Then breakfast and beer and music and song continue as dawn turns to day. Catherine's cross on the hill high above has witnessed another new May. For it's the first of May. And dancers are gathered by Catherine's cross to welcome the first of May. For it's a dancing Day. The people of Hampton are happy to say today is the first of May. They are first of May. We hope you've enjoyed this journey through some of the traditional customs that happen regularly throughout the year. And I expect many of you will be hoping that you're going to be able to dance again at them in not too many months time, we hope. Uh, this presentation was actually really done for uh, WIs, U3A groups and things like that. So um, I know that we're, many of you will know a lot of the history, but we've wanted to, um, you know, you've enjoyed the singing and um, hopefully, you know, it's reminded you of why we love the dancing, why we love the tradition. And um, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them afterwards. Thank you very much for coming along, everybody. And thank you also to Pauline and, Je and uh, uh, Jen and uh, all the other nice people who've been <laughs> uh, monitoring and, and being, uh, yeah, looking, stewarding and doing stuff like that. So thank you very much to you and thank you for, thank you for coming. Nigel says, what is it that leads to customs directing and arising in places other than their origin? I think it's, uh, it's community event, really, isn't it? I yeah. think actually now it's, it's possibly because nowadays we do, we do, as you probably know, I mean, if you work it out for yourselves, it's about, um, it's about doing things that other people are doing because they're fun um, and taking things on and, and being able to transfer those things into your own, into your own area. Um, certainly, yeah, we, we, we always... We always danced at the door and then we always wanted to go out and do something else on May Day and then we found Jack in the Green and then we found Rochester and there were lots of others. So I think it's about it's about, about wanting to do something that other people are doing and having fun with it. Um, I've got oh, Chris, Chris Lamb. What's Chris? Chris Lamb has got has, has sent me a poem. Philip Lark. Oh, Philip Larkin. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll have that. So Chris has sent... Um, an April Sunday brings the snow. Oh, yes, because of the snow outside. I'm with you now. An April Sunday brings the snow, making the blossom on the plum trees green, not white. An hour or two and it will go. Strange that I spend that hour moving between cupboard and cupboard, shifting the store of jam you made of fruit from these same trees. Five loads, a hundred pounds or more. More than enough for all next summer's teas which now you will not sit and eat behind the glass underneath the cellophane remains your final summer, sweet and meaningless and not to come again. That's a lovely poem. That's a lovely poem by Philip Larkin and one that I don't remember. Thank you so much to Chris for that one. Um, he's also sent us um, Dancing Year by Mike Lawson. I'll just see if there's any questions underneath it and then we'll, we'll come back <laughs> if we need to. I've got uh, thank you there and a delightful, um, and no mention of wassail. Yes, Michael, I know, no, no, no the wassail, second, Michael, but it is, in, it is in the second talk. It's in the second talk. In fact, we do two wassails in the second talk. So, you know, if anybody wants to book us to come and talk to their, uh, their group or whatever, or if we, if we get to do this again on Zoom, you'll get wassailing next time twice. Yes, we start <laughs> and finish with wassailing and the other talk. And um, we travel around the, 
around the um, around England more. So we look at other customs, it's geographical um, rather than chronological. The, the the second the second talk that we do. So so yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, as Jill said, we 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 wrote it originally to to do for WIs, U three As, and groups of people that didn't know about folk customs, because um, because we know that that most of you out there have done most of these things and know quite a lot about them. So it's kind of preaching to the converted but I hope you enjoyed the singing and maybe there were one or two little bits in there that you didn't know and maybe there's a lot of stuff in there that brought things back which is which is always a nice thing to do isn't it and so, of course we all live in different parts of the country so yeah, you know yeah, yeah. we might go regularly to Hastings or to Rochester but mm. not so easy for you northerners <laughs> <laughs> You Northerners. Any any connection between Jack in Jack Valentine and Jack in the Green? Somebody says here, mm. or from his look, Jack the Ripper. Yeah, I was thinking so. The, 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 <laughs> the pictures of Jack Valentine. Thank you, thank you, Sue. Um, the, the pictures of that Jack Valentine were obviously put together by um, the Norwich bid um, on this this occasion to try and get people to come down to the town and, and spend money. Um, the that we 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 learnt about the custom through um, a. a a sort of a it was a radio norwich thing that they, they were doing a, it was a write-in it was before the days of twitter and so on but they did a sort of write-in and and and, and phone in getting people to talk about their their, um, their memories of jack valentine when they were kids and we've met quite a lot of people who from Nor who've lived in norfolk and who know about it we've also met people who come from norfolk and didn't know about it and we've also met people who've moved from norfolk and carried on the tradition in their in their new place um, much to the surprise and and um um, bewilderment of their neighbours who obviously know nothing about it but to them it's what you do every year you know you put presents on the doorstep and you pull them away with a bit of string so um all that stuff um is, is very interesting I, we, we it, it's something that I, I don't i do a little bit of singing for um a, a lunch club nearby here it's a it's a bunch of old i can say old people because most of them are older than me not a lot, some of them, but they are <laughs> older than me. Um, <laughs> and, and there was one lovely lady there who the first time I sang Jack Valentine had to tell me all about it when she was a little girl and, and, and all the things that she, she'd done. I used to sing, every time I went, I used to sing it for her. And of course, there came a time when she wasn't there anymore, which was rather sad, but um, but I still sing it when I go down there for, in her memory because she, she was the first person that I, I met who'd actually done the Jack Valentine uh, thing as a child so yes yeah, so it's a lovely tradition and I, I, I do like it um, uh, that uh, is yeah I think that's about oh, Lewis, oh, somebody yeah. mentions Lewis Bonfire yes indeed yeah. um, of course we know all about that and um, I saw one that asked whether you wrote The Amps of Sunrise which Barry did I did indeed much his song. I did ind and Diggle yes well done Cathy um it was it was diggle was this was the was the village that i added because because i i just had to put diggle in it has to be greenfield diggle and dog cross and delf otherwise it doesn't work at all as a song so yes yeah, they don't go through diggle but um but uh, they do in my song if you want an excuse for including diggle in your in your song it was there was a rush cart there in 1864 ah there you go <laughs> I, I thought they might have been. <laughs> and, and another, and another minor point. Yes, please. It said at Whittlesea, it was joined by the German strawberry. It's not the German strawberry. No. It's one of five hundred. Oh, yeah. One of five hundred German strawberries. Yes, that's right. Yes, and yes. a different, different day of the year as well, of course. But yes, it is a a strawberry from a Germany. Strawberry. Oh, yeah. Germany's Having yeah. seen many myself. It's, uh... <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Lovely to see you, mate. Yeah. And Allendale Tower Barrel. Ah, oh, yes, Allendale now. Allendale, and of course, there's there's a lot more even further north than that, aren't there? There's the um, the, the Stonehaven Fireballs, for example, which is an amazing tradition. Not on not on the fifth of November, but in uh, in January, um, and that's that's a great one that I used to do a, um, a, a as a part of. A, I used to do a, a children's show with my old colleague Graham Meek when I was in Life and Times, and we used to do stuff in primary schools about customs and traditions and get the children to uh, role play. We used to dress them up. And we used to get them to do all sorts of things and sing songs and. One one of the ones that we used to do was was tar barrels in in uh, in Ottery St Mary, but we also used to do the Stonehaven fireballs um, from right up north in, in Scotland, which was a lot of fun because we we had a, a pretend fireball on the end of a, bit, a long piece of, of rope, and they get the kids to swing it around their heads, which was a lot of fun in a small a small um, school hall. We used to be used to be quite popular when we did that one. Uh, but yes, Allendale tar barrels. Thank you for that one, Chris. Um, yes, that's the last one we've got there, I think, at the moment. Are there any questions that people want to just unmute themselves and ask? Yes, I, I love the, the songs that you, all the songs you sang. Um, are they, have you 
got the, the lyrics available anywhere? I could have if you wanted them. Uh, yes, I could. Uh, the, I, I haven't haven't actually got them published uh, some some of the songs a couple of the songs are recorded um the uh, all in the winter time the mummers one uh, is recorded and uh, amps sunrise is also recorded on a cd called caravari which was uh, something that uh, graham and i that uh, life and times did some years ago but those are the only two that have been commercially recorded um otherwise um You've been doing some haven't you have you oh yeah i've got it for no, I haven't. No, but there might be might be one or two that are that are now on my YouTube channel as well, um, because um, uh, I, I've done a few um, live things or other not the live things at all, virtual things for festivals and and uh, folk clubs and so on. I've got quite a few videos on the Barry Goodman um, YouTube channel. So if you've got the the, page, the patience to search for that, you might find one or two more. But Chris, if you want to drop me an email um, via Pauline or whatever, um, I'll happily supply lyrics of any of the songs that you'd like. Right. Thanks very much. You're very welcome, Chris. From uh, Richard. Richard has sent me uh, something that says, went to Osri about 24 years ago um, before health and safety was so prominent. It's amazing how many people will fit into a shop doorway when <laughs> someone carrying a burning barrel is running towards yeah. you. As a parent of a young child at the time, I had a conversation with a couple in the pub whose nine-year-old boy had run the children's barrel for wow. the first time, after which she'd done the ladies' race and he the men's. She said she would not have expected her son to do it, and it was entirely his choice. But 364 days a year, she taught her son not to play with matches. But on the 365th, she put a burning barrel on his back and told him to run with it because it was their tradition. Thank you, Richard. Wonderful story. I love that. We'll have that one. Go in the talk that thank you That's a great one. Mm. uh dennis would just like to apologize for starting the tradition at may day at amptel yeah. <laughs> i should think so well too. Done, dennis. yes i remember it getting well. up at four o'clock in the morning all because of you dennis taylor <laughs> and of course it didn't start in amptel did it um, yeah. it didn't start in amptel did it no it started in Leighton buzzard Exactly. Did indeed. <laughs> and then it moved to Amptill when I moved to a village just outside Amptill. That's right. And in, in Leighton Buzzard, I, I well remember the time we were dancing at the Market Cross at, at, in Leighton Buzzard, and somebody leaned out of a window in the, <laughs> the hotel opposite and said, Do you know what time it is? There's a clock <laughs> over there. Said, yes, it's six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Can I have a big round of applause for Barry and Jill, please? Thank you. And if you've enjoyed the talk and you've got a few spare quid, if you could put it into their chosen charity, that would be lovely. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yes, pretty schools me living in Chin, would love it. Thank yeah. you. Cheers, bye, bye now. Thank you. Thanks everyone for coming. Bye. See you next time. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. bye. bye.